Hello and welcome to Lawbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and today I'm on a perilous mission, a mission I probably won't survive. Now I've been told there's a vicious, bloodthirsty beast somewhere in the darkest depths of Hawthorne, the forest, the famous forest of Hawthorne. And it's my mission this morning to try and wrangle this monster of the dark. And as you can see, I've gone for a, a Jurassic Park era car, so we can try and sneak up on this thing. Hope it doesn't notice us, because if it does, I fear we might not get out alive. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to approach this frankly terrifying beast, but I'll think of a way. You there? Oh, there you are. Okay. I've been told this bloodthirsty, foul-tempered creature is around here somewhere. And I'm just going through all this, this scrub here just to try and find it. So I think we're close. Just keep following me. Okay, I think we're getting close here. It's there. There it is. There it is. Look. That's the creature we've been looking for. Okay, okay. Pretty sure that was it. That's the beast we're looking for. So I'm pretty sure it's kryptonite. The key is right next to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and sneak up on it and hope that it doesn't spot us. So let's go. Oh, quick. Okay. I think you can see it. You can just see it through the bushes there. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sneak up on it right now. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I think we've woken us, so we're gonna have to be really careful because it sounds pretty angry. Let's let's go. Let's go. Okay. I've got it. I've got it. I think I'll be able to get this beast under control now. I can't go anywhere. Now that I think I've got this thing under control, I can tell you a little bit about it. This is the SLS Gullwing, the natural successor, I guess, to the 300 SL. Now, under this bonnet is an absolute monster of an engine, a 420 kilowatt, 6.2 litre, naturally aspirated engine, which was so heavily modified by Mercedes-Benz. It is, in fact, based on the same engine that you find in the C or the E classes from this period. But it's been so heavily modified that Mercedes-Benz, in fact, gave it a whole new code name. Just take a look at it, what a beast. Now we've come this far, it seems only reasonable that we try and take this beast for a bit of a spin and see what it really does. So let's do it. Now that we're safely inside, well not that safely as it turns out, but we've managed to subdue this monster, we can get a bit more of an idea of what this car really is. Like I mentioned, it's a 420 kilowatt, 6.2 litre, fire breathing, snorting, spitting machine, which harks back to the old days of the 300 SL going, which was famous for winning lots of races, but also for being an incredibly dangerous car to drive. It was, it was frightening, it was a widow maker. And it may not sound like much of a selling feature to call this car frightening and dangerous and uh, widow maker, but if it wasn't those things, it wouldn't be half as fun to drive. Just around here, just as I'm driving through Richmond and um, Burnley and all of that, it feels like a, any other sort of AMG Mercedes, but it's only when you put your foot down and you give it you know, a bit of old heave home, and push the explode button that... It, it, it just it just turns into an animal and I wouldn't want to put my foot hard on the explode button midway through a corner because I reckon I'd go from facing the right direction to the wrong direction back to the right direction then in the wrong direction again then I'd be in a bush or a lake or as it would turn out here a river and I'm not going to do that but we'll give it a little bit of a squirt 
Now, in addition to it being, I guess, just a, an engine with a seat strap to it, it's got quite a few little interesting comfort features. Um, I've got heated seats, I've got climate control, Bluetooth, so people can harass me if I'm out trying to enjoy myself. I've also got a really very nice b and sound system, which is an absolutely thumping sound system. It's very, very good. I'm not quite sure why they put it in these, not other Mercs, but I wish they put it in more of them because it really is quite cool. And they've got the little sort of things that sit on the dashboard, which remind you that you, you've got a very expensive sound system. It's just little details like this, which make the car just a little bit more special. But let's not beat around the bush. The coolest part of this car has got to be the doors. The way they go up, I mean, it's totally unnecessary in a car like this, but it adds so much drama and theatre to the whole experience. It sets you up for what's going to be an exciting drive, whether that's going down to the street to get a bit of, bit of milk or some eggs, or if you're actually going on a proper rally or taking it to a track. I mean, God help you if you do this. Now, the very long bonnet is not just for show. I mean, it really is partly for show, but there's actually a very good reason why they have such a long bonnet on this car. And that's because it allows them to place the engine on this side of the front axle, which essentially means that this is a mid-engine car. And now we've got something very, very exciting to contend with. We have got these ridiculous lights, which they've decided in their infinite wisdom to put on the, the freeway. God knows why, but here we are, we're stuck with it. It's part of being under a totalitarian regime. But regardless, I like to consider it as being like a drag race at the start. So let's see what we end up competing with. At the moment, it looks like a green Volkswagen van. Who's gonna win? Well, let's just find out. Oh no, it turns out we are going to be competing with a Honda Civic. A Honda Civic with some panel damage. So, I think we're gonna to have to take it out of sport for this one, and we'll go, no, we're gonna to have to take it out of comfort for this one and put it into sport. Now let's see if we can uh, smoke this guy. Great. Oh, three, two. Oh. It was close, but we did it. Very lucky stuff. Oh, policeman, hello. There is a second part to this story. We're not just driving around burning rubber in an SLS AMG Gullwing. No, 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 no. We're comparing it to Mercedes-Benz latest hardcore, stripped out, fire-breathing racer for the road. And there it is, the AMG GT. What a beast. Well, that was a bit of fun. Now let's see how the SLS compares to the AMG GT. Let's go for a ride. Now instantly I can already feel the difference between these two cars. I mean, like the SLS, this AMG GT feels just, I could be in anything. I could be in a C-Class, for I know. It's that easy to drive, it's that light and comfortable. It's not until you have a really good listen, you can hear a little bit of a V8 burble, and then you put your foot down and all hell breaks loose. At 340 kilowatts, the AMG GT is a little bit down on power to the SLS, but you have to remember this. 
It's a much lighter car, it's a much smaller car in every single respect. And because it's twin turbo, four litre twin turbo, the new generation of Mercedes V8, which is being rolled across their whole range, it's got torque from absolutely nothing. And all of that makes it a very different car to drive. It's got a very different feel to the SLS. Now, like the SLS, the AMG GT is really an everyday car. It's a car that has all the mod cons that you'd expect of a $200,000 plus dollar car. It's got climate control, Bluetooth, which you can use to stream music, sat nav, heated seats. Now the reason this car feels so different to the SLS is very deliberate. I wear the SLS as a celebration of crazy burnout, just madness. This is a very different beast. This is designed to go up against specifically the Porsche 911 and to give it a real run for its money in terms of handling and performance and every other respect. And dollar for dollar, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this absolutely trumps the 911. It's just so, it's just so much more. It's got all the thrill of the SLS, but all the practicality and sensibility and the boring stuff that the 911 has, but it just amplifies it. And that's what's so cool. It just, it's, it's light, it's nimble. Um, the engine is mounted in the perfect spot, like the SLS behind the front axle. And instead of using computer trickery to make it handle better, like a lot of these cars do these days, it's got proper weight saving technology. Like the bonnet, for instance, that's made out of magnesium. Now, why magnesium? I don't know. All I know from magnesium, if you hold it up to a flame, it just bursts into you know this bright white light. But I'm sure Mercedes have thought about this and I don't think this will be an issue. But what it does mean is that it's very nimble. Look at that. Now that we've stopped, we can take in a few of the details on this car, and they're absolutely everywhere. I mean, right down to the intelligent LED lights, the radar-guarded cruise control, to the big black scary wheels, and all the way down to the most minute of details. Take a look at this. V8 by turbo. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? And now we're outside the car, we can take in the perfect proportions that this car has. It's got a long bonnet, small rear end, a cabin that's right up against the back axle. It's absolutely perfect, the shape of the car, and it just has so much presence and so much character. This is a car that without doubt will be an unbelievably collectible classic car, not too far into the future. But the AMG GT's party piece it's not its shape, it's not all the awesome bits and pieces we've seen. It's the noise it makes. Get a load of this. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Let's get it back on the road. Now I guess really the one big question is now that we're sort of coming to an end is which of these cars is the better car which is the one that you'd actually want to own well trying to pick my favorite between the two would be like trying to pick which of your children is your favorite it'd be a totally impossible question to answer unless you're a bit sick well i couldn't actually answer because i don't have kids but if i did i imagine it'd be a very challenging one to answer now Trying to compare these two is impossible. They're apples and oranges. I mean, they're in totally different leagues, designed for totally different purposes. So it really comes down to what you want in your car. But, I've got to be honest, whichever way you go, you will have one of the most awesome, best modern Mercedes Benzes ever built. They are just both phenomenal in just so many different ways, and each in their own unique way. So if you want, one of these awesome machines, one of these absolutely extraordinary, incredible, uh, unbelievable machines, 
then you have nowhere else to go but Lorbeck luxury cars.